What's the haps? I'm John, aka Maroka, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Agarest Generations of War. Agarest Generations of War is a game developed by Compile Heart and published by Ghostlight, and is out today, 3rd of October, on Steam. However, it has been around for some time before that. It's been out since... Since at least 2007 on the PS3, in at least in Japan, at which point it's then been ported to other consoles and other regions and localized, and it looks like it's been through a bit of a roller coaster ride in the last, well, six years since it launched. So it's been all over the place, and it is finally here today on Steam for you to pick up. So normally with my first impressions videos, I'll play through, well sometimes I don't play much, sometimes I'll, I normally won't play much more than about half an hour or so before doing the video, just to, just to get a feel for the game. But this one, it's, it's a Japanese RPG, and these things tend to be pretty extensive in terms of content. And it's taken me best part of two hours to get through just the tutorial type stuff, the bit where it's actually teaching you the game. So I've dug into this one a little bit deeper than I normally would with a first impressions video. So let's just fire up the game and see what we can do with it. File one is my current file. So we are here at the first town. This is our world map. We can wander around on it. The blue icons are battles that have been. The other marks are tend to be sort of chunks of story and events happening. The red marks are battles I have yet to do. It's it, it is a strategy RPG, so all the battles are pre-scripted. There's no random encounter type stuff. There's no sort of open world. It's not like a Final Fantasy thing where you're going to be wandering around running into random mobs for ages. There, I think for the most part these red ones tend to be for more filler content, but at the same time it is a pre-scripted thing. It's it's not it's not a random battle. It's something you must do to get out of the way to move onwards. So we're here at Dodone, which is the first town. But I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into battle just so we can see the actual gameplay, because uh, otherwise we risk getting bogged down in story because these things are always pretty heavy on the story. So yes, we would love to go to South Merck's Road West and have a look at how this battle system plays out. So graphically it looks well, it looks six years old, which is probably ex which is probably because it is. But it's the the artwork's still done very nicely. The characters all look pretty nice. Like I say, the textures, you know, it looks like something from six years old, but that's hardly surprising. But these things are always more about the artwork. The character designs are great. If you can't really look at them now, but when you go into menus and when you go into stories, you'll see the actual artwork a bit more. Right now, it's all low res sprites for the purposes of battle, but during conversation, you can see a lot more character artwork. So, right, first first things first, the characters move before we take actions. In most strategy RPGs, certainly that I've seen, the character moves, then takes an action, then the next character takes a move and then takes an action. In this case, everyone has to move at once, and then everyone takes their turns. So I, I've i got my Leonhardt, I, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, I think Leonhardt, I'm going to call him that anyway, is my main protagonist here, so he goes first, he's the fastest I guess. So where would he like to go? Let's move towards the enemy, shall we? Seems like a solid choice. I'm going to choose a direction to face. You see the glowing squares around him also allow me to set up sort of combos with other characters, so if he faces that way, my big furry guy, he he lands him on the squares so I can do a combo attack with him. I, uh, he's, I'm going to move him though, so I don't think I need to leave him there. I can move him there. If I click on him, I can see where his where his squares actually fall, which are marked in blue now. So if I go back to her, I can see that she probably wants to move one space forward, and then she's linked with him. So if I go there, got a green yeah, there we go. Got a nice green light tells us we're linked. Move the camera around. Not that the camera's <laughs> camera does tend to hit the geometry occasionally. You know, there's trees in the background, and the camera just happens to sit behind it, which ain't great, but. As you can see, yeah, they're linked, so they can now attack together in on the next turn. So let's leave her facing that way. Uh, big furry Borg9. He presumably wants to move behind there because there's a nice link spot. See, there, there, they're linked as well. So a lot of strategy behind the positioning, of course. You don't want people to be able to stab you in the back as well. It's typical strategy stuff. There's a lot of elements to the combat that they've added in this one that I haven't seen before, and it makes it 
It's combat deep, deep combat. So she's up first, and is she linked with him? I think she might be linked with him, so I might be able to get a double attack going on. So select skill, as we do. Select him, because he is the only one within range. And there we go. Okay, these are the guys... Oh, I seem to be linked with all of them. That's brilliant. Okay. So everyone's linked, so I could do a big triple hit and just wipe out one of these guys off the face of the earth if I needed. So let's open up with... Let's open up with the... Il well, I want to use Impulse, but Impulse is a little bit overkill. It's quite a powerful move. Let's just use the old Trick Hit. Trick Hits will do. And I can select one from his abilities so that... Uh, Leonhardt can join in with the attack. He can throw in... Oh, let's throw in a power attack on that one. And... Let's see how they do, because these guys these guys are mostly just trash mobs, so it shouldn't take too much to take them down. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's done mostly damage, and I think Leonhardt's going to finish the job. And bam, there we go. Take down. Okay. One down, two to go. All the voice acting in this is Japanese, so it will help if you know Japanese, but it's obviously all the interface and all the text is all done in English, so it's not like that's going to inhibit your enjoyment of the experience. But if you're the sort of person who knows Japanese, you'll benefit from this title. So uh, that's her done, so let's put her on standby. In hearts go. You must use a skill. I have one guy just in range here. And because I moved him, suddenly everyone's no longer linked up anymore, so he has to attack on his own. And I don't actually have any abilities that reach that far, apparently. Actually, I, th I think my Sonic Wave would reach that far, which is why I could attack him. But the AP, the action points, I blew most of them on that last attack. So I don't actually have enough action points to make my attack. So I think I might just have to leave him on standby as well. Which leaves us with one guy. Those, go those guys are apparently aren't going to attack me, so whatever. I won't... I'm too bothered by that. And he's got no range. I can't hit anything here from here. He's got he's quite a short range character compared to the other guys. The other guys can hit stuff from miles away. Morg9. Cannot! So I'll put him on standby. Uh, let's get back to moving around. So he's up first. No, uh, where do I want to move him? We want to move him much closer to the enemy. Let's move him two spaces forward. And face him at the enemy. So the little lady, Ellis, probably, she, well, it would be useful if we could get her behind him, but I don't think that's happening, so the best link I can put her is here. That might just work. And his links are right behind him, so if I move, take Borg9 and place him behind Leonhardt, that should sort us out. Okay. That looks better. That looks, that looks good for a fight now. Everyone's nice and close. So who's up first? Oh, the bandits are going to actually make some attacks now. I presume they're melee only, which is why they didn't attack last time. Although that looks like that's got some range. Don't know why I didn't use that. At any rate, are you done? Is he done? I think he's done. Next guy? Yeah, next guy's going to have his go. He's going to blast me as well. My reflex is going to blast Ellis. They ain't done much. I think my character's a little bit overpowered at the minute because, quite frankly, it, I think this is a, this is exclusive to the Steam version. If you go onto the Steam page, at the bottom it does say free DLC pack with this. And judging by the PS3 version, I think the DLC see, um, scene on this one is going to be fairly extensive. The PS3, I'm aware, lists 32 different packs of DLC, which is extensive by anybody's measure. So let's see who I can hit here. And yeah, when you buy the when you buy the um, Steam version, it gives you it gives you a bunch of a bunch of extra free DLC packs, which basically just seems designed to give you a bit of a boost at the start. So I'm now running around with a pretty good weapon and pretty good armor on all these characters right off the bat. I didn't have to earn them; they just came with the characters right at the start, and a chunk of money and stuff. And it's like it seems a little overpowered. So let's, okay, borg has got a ton of AP now, so I can probably use him quite effectively. So power attack there, and let's throw in his double edge because 
if we combine certain abilities, we can combine them to make better ones. So the one they teach you right off the bat is Broken Hit, which is Power Attack and Double Edge. If you've got enough AP, I can do that with one character. See, um, Leonhardt knows both those abilities, so he could execute both those abilities and make one Broken Hit in one turn. Or I can combine them between characters and do it that way. Uh, it seems like there's a whole bunch of those to learn throughout the game, so it's definitely a rewarding experimentation by mixing and changing up your attacks as you go. You'll learn all sorts of cool new stuff. That's kind of cool, I like that. That's, that seems pretty cool. So let's see what Broken Hit does. Is it going to destroy this guy? I can tell you right now, yeah, yeah it will. So he's down. He is standing no more. Okay. Uh, next, next attack. This guy's right next to us, so why not? So he's still got some AP, but nobody's linked with him anymore. He's moved, out, he's moved out of location, so I can't link anything, so let's see what our blast does. Blast seems like it's a pretty hefty ability. How hefty? Not hefty enough. But close, close. One more hit from pretty much anything should finish this one off. So you go on standby. And the little lady Ellis. What can you do to this guy to finish him off? You can... Ooh, I can... Now, I haven't used this ability before. I'm not sure how this works. There is definitely a capture... There's this capture ability, which is supposed to be able to capture... Well, low low health enemies, and I now happen to have a low health enemy. So I'm intrigued. Let us, let us capture him. Let's see what this does. Does this work? Have I got you? Has this suddenly turned into Pokemon? Have I got... Uh, did that not work? You can't capture him. Okay. Seems like there's a very limited subset of things that I can actually capture then. Never mind. At any rate, I now have... I have 9 AP left, which is enough to get a trick hit in, so that I'll have to do. Whether this... I think this is supposed to be like a delayed damage attack, so... No? That works. The description says it's like a delayed damage attack, but I guess it must do some damage up front as well. Either way, it was enough to finish that guy off. And then we get all our rewards at the end. So you get 13 gold for one battle. The starter boost pack gives you 10,000 right at the start, which is silliness for, you know, when battles are giving you 13 a fight, and they take as long as they just did, they, you know, they take, you know, 5-10 minutes to do a fight, you know. You're not earning money at a crazy rate at this stage, and yet the game just gives you this 10,000 right off the bat. Although, it's worth noting, when you start up the game, there are a bunch of options to basically disable all the DLC packs. Now, there are some good stuff in there. There is stuff like extra dungeons. You might want those, because they're obviously you're not going to see them straight off the bat. There's stuff like each, each section of the game, because the game is divided into five, essentially, generations of the game. And each section, each, each of those generations then gets one extra dungeon to play through for extra cool loot and experiences and things. And Borgnine's level up, so let's, level, let's spend some points on him. We've got... What's his, what, are, what are his strengths? His strengths are clearly strength and vitality. So let's continue working on those. Let's put a few points in there. And some agility just to make him a little faster. Can I do that? No. Oh god, that, co that costs five... Five skill points to level him up one. He's not the most agile creature in the world, then. Or the smartest or the luckiest, because they're pretty poor as well. No, I think I think I think his main talents are punching things pretty hard. So fine, we'll we'll let him do that. I put his attack up a good 24 and a bit more defense and a bit more hit. Whatever that does, I presume that's your chance to hit. I guess. So that's cool. Okay, we sorted. Yes, we're done. Let's finish that. Oh, you've leveled up as well. All right. So, she's not very great at the old strength and vitality, but we can put points elsewhere. She's pretty lucky, can put some points in there. Okay, now that's gone up to two, right. So let's put some points into in intellect, and agility. And I guess that'll, that'll see us through. Because now her magic ability is 492, that seems pretty sturdy. Yep, let's do that. Okay. And onwards! 
so yeah, as I say, the game is divided into five generations, and these characters... I believe there's almost a vaguely dating sim-esque thing in here, so we'll get... It's got a party system like any, like all good JRPGs, so we'll get a bunch more characters, and we'll be able to swap and change them, and it seems like we can also get different arrangements to put them on the battlefield in the future. I mean, right... Oh, hang on. Controls are not super intuitive there, but... Yeah, field, I think that basically changes sort of the layout on the field, so again, the more elements of strategy, arrange your people how you wish. And then if you're going to change party, I, if I say don't want Ellis to be placed there on the battlefield anymore, say I want her on the back lines, I could go, hey, Ellis moved to the back, so now she's stood behind Leonhardt instead of just to, the, just to the diagonal of him. Or if I want her, you know, behind Borgnine, because, you know, he's taking a few hits in battle and he needs a bit of reinforcement, he needs the healer to be a bit close to him. Well, okay, I can move her over there, and suddenly she's got much closer range on him in battle so that she can she can get the heals on him. But for now, I kind of I kind of like having her there. I'm using her to fight as well, so let's back out of that. So, so yeah, obviously we're going to get multiple characters, and our main protagonist, Leon Hart, has, uh, the sto as the story goes, he's made a pact with some deific character. It's not quite explained exactly who she is, but she appears before him and says, I can save your life, but you must give me your soul and the souls of all of your generations to come. And he does so, and at some point, one of his party becomes a romance interest, and I think it's probably Alice, let's be honest, it's kind of fairly obvious. So I think at some point, uh, there may be other options, but I think the main option probably is intended to be Ellis. So at some point, he falls madly in love with Ellis, and they have they grow up and have kids together, and your kids become the next generation of the game, and you start again, and you have to raise that character up, and they fall in love and do it again five times through. So you kind of, based on Leonhardt's and Ellis's stats and stuff, that will then sort of, the genetics will feed through to the next generation, and your child will have traits of both those characters. So the abilities you know, the skills, your stats, they, they will sort of form the basis of your new character. And again, like I say, you will continue to do this five times in a row, hopefully trying to create some sort of... If you're, if you're that dedicated, hopefully trying to create some sort of ultimate character, but... I think for me, I'll be quite happy just to play through the game and just see what I get. At any rate... Now let's have a quick look at the equipment, because I want to show you the silly things. So, uh, the Iron Sword, we didn't get anything better Iron Sword-wise. The swords were fairly standard, but we got this bracer, bracelets, whatever. Now, we started out with... I think I met... Have we sold them? We might have sold the basic ones. I have a feeling the game auto-sold them at some point, which is slightly annoying, actually. I didn't... I'm not sure I would have wanted them to auto-sell equipment for me, but... There was certainly an iron bracelet which had basic basic stats. And it throws you this battle frame and lucky charm and steel bracelet and bracelet sort of uh, fey QE. And they've all just got really, really high stats compared to anything else, which is just silly. And the lucky charm gives me more AP, that's quite good. But at the same time, I feel like that's overpowered and surely you don't want that right off the bat. So I feel like I'm sort of burning through this content a bit too easily. I don't like that. So, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the, the booster packs and stuff need turning off at the start. The Dexter Dungeons are probably good content to have. They're probably fun and interesting and new, but without actually breaking the game. But I definitely think that stuff like the boost at the start probably is a little imbalanced. I've no idea what the rest of the DLC is going to entail, because obviously there is going to be a lot, and a considerable amount of that is attainable by pre-purchasing the game. However... Yeah, it's probably a little too late to do that now. The game it will be now out. Anyway, South Merks Road East. Let us, let us jump into the next battle and find out what happens here. Is it more bandits? I bet it probably is. Yeah. Hang on. Come on, guys. Are you on spawning? Yeah, a bunch more bandits. So, let's just... Let's, let's get moved up. Okay, it's fine. You face that way. Let's get everyone... I'm not even going to bother with the link attacks this time, I just want to want to get everything up. If you're feeling particularly lazy, and you know what, I am. I'm going to press Q, and the game can play itself for me. So, if I press Q, a little red marker at the top of the screen says automatic, and everything's just going to go. 
I presume this is probably for getting through the trust battles like this. You know, if you're really not too bothered about sitting and strategizing and doing this in depth every damn time, every time you run into three bandits, you don't want to sit and have to pick out complex strategies for them every time. What you do is press Q, switch on automatic. I imagine there will be an Xbox pad equivalent as well. On keyboard, it's just Q anyway. And they'll just go and smash up everything for you. And obviously, like I say, at this stage, I'm that powerful that I can do that. If, if it were a boss fight or something, I think I, I think it would be likely that pressing Q would just be a quick way to get yourself completely and utterly traipsed. As it is at this point, it's just a breeze. They're, they're just all using abilities that are just smashing up the enemies. And it's no big deal. So, yeah. Overkill. Yeah, they got an overkill and got some grass, which is not what it sounds like. It's a healing item. It's not something you can smoke. And he's going to blow him up. And there we go. I didn't even have to lift a finger and I won the battle. So if you turn automatic off, I don't want to run to the next battle automatically. So there we go. They got an S rank and I didn't even have to tell them anything to do. They literally just breezed through that as well as could possibly be expected. So that's cool. So if we have a jaunt back to the town, Dodone. Not that there's anything I particularly need to see here, but I just want to give you a show show you around. Now, obviously, like like the overworld, it's not a free roaming thing, which is a shame. I always like sort of exploring new towns in JRPGs. That was always a thing. I mean, I haven't played many in years. It was a thing of my teens, but certainly when you got to a new town, just all exploring all the nooks and crannies, there's treasure treasure chests hidden behind buildings and things. Those are always exciting to find. And now it's just you got a picture of the village and which building would you like to visit. Which is fair enough, I don't know many strategy RPG game, RPGs that sort of let you explore, but... Meh. So be it, so be it. So we've got the item shop. Yes, huh, okay. Buy item! So these are the... Uh, this, is, this is another minor gripe of mine. I can't actually compare these items to anything I've got equipped. You kind of need to memorize your own weapon statistics. I have no idea whether Florette is better than the weapon I've got. Although I think my weapon I've got was an iron sword, so I can probably just go, is this better? It's better as a magic item, it's got more hit, but as an actual attack item, not so much. Iron blade. How's the hit doing? It's got less chance to hit, but more powerful. Iron Knife is great chance to hit, good magic weapon, but not much attack. But, like I say, these are all fairly redundant given that I've just been given such silly gear at the start anyway. If you hadn't, you might be looking at these, and the money would be appropriate. I mean, look at this, I've got 7,000 gold, the items cost 100. If you, if you were playing through the game normally, the fights would be giving you, I don't know, well, like I say, about 10, 12, 13 gold a fight. And the items cost 100, so you'd be looking at doing like 8 fights to buy one sword, which is not unreasonable. As it is, I've started with 10,000 gold, bought lots of really silly things, because I've just been able to go through and look at look all this blacksmithing, uh, all the blacksmithing books and things. And they cost 500, 750, 1,000, and I can just go and buy a load of these right off the bat, and there's like, it's no big deal. I mean, the highest, most expensive book there is to buy, Advanced Smithing. Which, I imagine you're not supposed to get too much later on in the game. I can buy right at the start for 10,000. I couldn't buy anything else, like, but I could do If I wanted that one and that one only, I could have it. There's no accessories to buy. Uh, these are the bracelets, and they're just pathetic compared to... I mean, steel bracelet, there you go. Defense 55, resist to, uh, 55. I know full well one of the bracelets I was given in that starter boost gear had 200 defense and 200 resist. He's four times better than the items you can buy in the first town. It's ludicrous. But, like I say, there is an option to turn that off. Uh, had I known beforehand, I probably would have done. I just kind of went with whatever the game's defaults threw at me. So, consider yourself uh, forewarned and forearmed on that front. If you're planning to play through this game and don't want to be, you know, handheld for, through the first, probably, first generation or something. I have no idea how long this, that gear's gonna last. Seems like it's gonna last me a while. Might not be the first generation, but a while. Uh, so, yeah, I... I... Yeah, if you want to turn those off, you might get a better experience out of the game. So we've got a blacksmith, where we've got some enhancing. Now, I bought all those smith books, but I'm not sure what I do with them. Basically, 
There are EPs that you earn through battles, and I think I got a bunch in the starter boost pack as well. I'm pretty sure I got... I'm sure, pretty sure I got like five, six hundred out of that starter pack as well, and I wasn't supposed to. I'm supposed to, supposed to use like nine to level up my iron sword with the meagre amounts I have. Not just take this magic blade, which is super powerful, and drop tons on it to make that even more powerful. But yeah, these EPs you can spend on enhancing weapons, and they can be enhanced up to five times, to become level five, and then... I think you use them further for crafting further in the game, so once that hits level five, I can... I forget what the term is, but I think that you can basically turn it into a material to form another weapon. So I presume it'll become a better, it'll be a material for a better sword. Imagines the way that one works, which is kind of cool. Is oh, well, that way you sort of you never you never like throwing away the nice weapons in games, but when you've got the recipe to make an even better sword out of your existing sword, oh well, suddenly you're not throwing it away. You're upgrading it, and that's kind of nice. You don't have to lose the good sword anymore. You get to keep it and make, a, make better things out of it. That's cool. So I'm going to spend some here. Uh, ah, Daka is my Borgnine's guy. Um, Borgnine's weapon. Should we spend some on that? Let, let's see what we can enhance with that. Alright, I see. I have to spend that. And 96 for the next level. 120. So I, I could max that out. I could totally max that out for 432. I don't want to totally max it out. I'll, I'll spend a bit. I'll make it level 3, but I won't max it out. Can I enhance this? Are you sure you want to proceed? Yes! So, Knuckles with a shield attached, which is a insane sounding thing. What, what now? Is it done? Do I, do I have to do something to it to enhance it? No, I'll say it's enhanced. That was just presumably what I got. It doesn't tell you how the stats changed there, so I don't know how much better it is than how it was. Let's grab our... let's grab our battle frame. No, that's quite an expensive one. No, let's... Let's spend some on Ellis. Sure. Let's enhance that. Yeah. So, that's its new stats. Don't know what the old stats were, but there we go. Accessories, we don't have any. We have skills. Skills are kind of equipped like items, which is a weird way to do it, but they are there. You can just sort of equip and unequip skills, and they can be upgraded like items, because that's essentially what they are. Um, these are these are active skills that are sort of... They almost seem to be set in weapons. I, I, the, th the thing that springs to mind is the adding jewels to weapons, sockets, like you get in like Diablo... I think you get it in Diablo. Torchlight, certainly. World of Warcraft, definitely. That sort of thing, where you add a jewel and it changes the stats, it's kind of like, oh, well you can add a HP up to your bracelet, or you can add critical hit rate to your bracelet, and then you can take it out and put a different one in instead. And these are kind of expensive, and I'm probably not going to be able to upgrade much on this page. I can I can improve the item drop rate. Why that one's blue and that one's not, I'm not sure. Maybe that means that's because I've got one equipped and one not equipped? I don't know. Let's just upgrade that and see what it does. Let's just max that out, yeah. So we've got a great item drop rate. Things are going to be dropping items like crazy if I wear that one. So there we go. That'll, that'll be a great one to have. And I'm com I'm pretty low on the a old AP now, so let's head out. I don't know what I'm doing with that, really. We've also got this Adventurer's Guild, which... I don't if it, if it serves any other purpose other than changing titles, I don't know. But you can earn titles for doing things in the game. And, oh, there we go. Beginner is win 10 battles. I've I've done I've won 10 battles so I can now unlock that. And you get a bunch of rewards for doing that. Ah, I get gold, party points, uh, TP. What's TP? I'm not sure what TP is. Uh, got uh, some healing items and a divine branch. Not seen one of them before so I don't know what that is. Let's have a quick glance down to see what else there is. Is there any other items that I can get? So if there's any rewards I want them obviously. Part-timer is, again, possess over 1,000 gold. Hang on, I had I started the game with 10,000. What? Parvenu, possess 10,000. Admittedly, I, I used some of my money before finding that I could complete that title, so I didn't get it, but... If you stopped off at the Adventurer's Guild before doing anything else, you could get that one as well. Which, again, it's just silly, silliness. Enhance 100 times, yeah. Um, stuff to work through, there's a lot of stuff to work, work through as you go here. It, it looks like they, this place should serve some other purpose. It's like, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's a lot of 
artwork and character and stuff, interface gone into making what's essentially a single function, which is almost a side thing. It's a novelty, it's not even a necessary part of the game, it's just titles, you know? But I don't know. Kudos to them for doing so. Anyway, let us head forth and grab that quest. While in exploration point, your HP will not be restored after a battle. Ah, this is a thing. This is essentially the start of a dungeon, isn't it? Effect effectively, an exploration point. So we need to we need to either heal up characters or leave and go back in, I guess, to heal up. You'll also be unable to use a defeated character until you left the exploration point and resurrected them at a first aid station. Yep, let's go have a look at this exploration point. Oh, hello, we got a, we got a bit more exploration. I've got some control over the character. I move around, yeah, WSD or click to move, both work, both work well. It's something I haven't seen up to this point of the game. The fact that I'm like two and a half hours in and I haven't seen anything perhaps says a lot, but there's a treasure chest. We like treasure chests, let's, let's go see what that is. Is it a mimic? It's always a mimic. Big obvious tre treasure chests are always mimics. I don't know, I don't even know if they're in this game, but mimics are in a lot of games. I, Bet they are. What do we got in here? Oh, it's just grass. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm sure we'll need to heal up at some stage and that'll be useful to have. So we need to explore around. I, w I guess this... I guess this will have random battles. Ah, interesting. Okay. Random battles are indeed a thing in this game. That's fair, fair enough. So we've got, guess what, it's some bandits. Oh, and there's a bug thing in the corner. The bug thing is a new one. So let's move him forward. Uh, let's move her. Was that link points? That wasn't link points. Where was his link points? His link point was there. Wait, no, no, I've undone, I've gone back too far. Right, you stay there. You cannot move into his link points, never mind. And you. Oh, no, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing this all wrong. Right. If you right click it undoes the move, whereas uh, left click sort of identifies link points. That's what I'm after. So Borg9 can only get to one point, but actually that would help him traverse the battlefield a lot faster, so that will be good. So yeah, you, you take your places, guys. And now it's action time. All the enemies get to go first by the looks of things. They must all be faster than us. I hope. So, he's going to use thunder, some sort of lightning bug, I guess. Thunder! He's going to hit me like they always do, because that's bandits. Bandits hit you with melee attacks. Can I have my go now? Can I take a go? The enemies also do have the link points, but I'm not sure if you can, if they're quite easy to establish where they are. I think it would help if you memorize these, and I think as you go along, you probably would start to learn which formations work well for linking characters together and stuff. So, yeah, skill. Hit you. I've got... I don't have quite enough to do a... To do the double attack, so I have to combine their abilities to do the double attack. And that moves them up into the combat zone, which is useful. And we do a broken hit! Ah! Broken hit. Die. Yeah! And he's down. Excellent. So he doesn't have any other any other AP, so let's put him on standby and Impulse is a good one. Impulse usually one hit stuff, so yep, impulse. Bang 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 bang! And that's a complete overkill. I think that meter under their health is like if you do the full value of their health meter again in excess damage over their, you know, zero health mark. It's overkill. What that what that actually earns you, not sure. I presume it must earn you some manner of things. So he's got eight AP left, and this guy is not in range, so we're just gonna have to save them. AP does roll over to the next turn, so you can save up. It rolls over up to twice, I believe. So, if he's got 16, he can save up up to uh, 48. Is my maths correct there? I think, yeah. So, if he's got if he gets 16 per turn, he can he can 
use up to a 48 AP ability. If it goes beyond 48, well, presumably he can't use that anymore. So this guy's a ranged guy. I think we really need to close in on him. So you move there. And you want to move there because that's a nice link point. Cool. Yep, that'll do us. I'm enjoying the music in this. The, mu the soundtrack's pretty cool. It's fairly standard JRPG fare, but they're always fun. Soundtracks are always great to listen to and these sort of things. And this is no different. It's a very solid title, just like any other. So let's see if we can finish this guy off uh, with a skill. You the... Can we do a... Ah! We have one of our special abilities avail available here. We've got another... If you look on the character's uh, portraits, you've got another statistic there. The SP meter, which is earned by, well, taking damage. Each time you take damage, you will gain SP. And um, you think you're gaining a bunch more if someone, you know, actually drops in combat and needs to be resurrected. And... You've got these Howling Blade ability. Howling Blade is one such ability. It's much more powerful than your standard ability. It costs a lot more AP and costs 50 SP, which I just happen to have. So why don't we use this and see what it does? Howling Blade! Break! I'm not sure what that means. Something broke. Either way, that was definite overkill. And we took down the Hornet and got Poison Needle. And got another one for overkilling it. I guess overkills earn you extra loot. So that's cool. And there we go, yeah, 120% bonus because the enemies were tougher than me and I did them quickly. And... 4 EP, that's what I'm saying, there's those gear to upgrade them. I'm getting 4 EP a turn and they were costing hundreds and I was able to just spend hundreds. That boost is just a little... a little too much, really. But anyway... It's a random battle. Now, I'm not sure how far into this forest, I presume there will be a boss at the end of it, but how far into the forest it might be, I don't know. At any rate, I think I think you've seen most of what this game has to offer at this stage. Certainly, certainly the stuff that's presented to you early on. I'm intri intrigued to see how the whole generational thing works, but clearly that's much, much further into the game than this. This is just still first impressions, as it were. And my first impressions are that I'm really enjoying this. I like this. It's 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 a lot more tactical than any strategy games, strategy RPG games that I've played in the past. There's a lot more elements at play in there to make it more interesting, and I think that works well. So thank you very much for watching. I've been John, aka Maroka, and this has been Agares Generations of War. Currently available on Steam for fifteen pounds or your regional equivalent. Go check it out. See you later. Yeah!